Hey, 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 what's going on? It's David, I'm back. Um, first off, Happy New Year uh, to anyone you know, following, I guess, the Gregorian calendar. I'm recording this on the 2nd of January. Um, so right now it's 12.38. Uh, what a crazy year 2020 was. We're on to 2021. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about something that just kind of blew my mind. Um, and that is Bitcoin. Um, so today, uh, Bitcoin finally broke thirty thousand uh, dollars Bitcoin, and it even continued to grow. Uh, when I thought about making this video, it was thirty-two thousand, and now it's uh, you know scratching thirty-three thousand. So absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I kind of want to go into Bitcoin, uh, what I think it may do as a completely uneducated layman's person uh, point of view. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I just, I'm so excited at this milestone and I wanted to share it. Um, and before going into this, I just wanted to share that I do own a partial amount of a Bitcoin, so I may be biased. Um, so I think, I think the first time I kind of started hearing about Bitcoin, um, you know, I've been in tech for a while, so uh, I probably found out um, I like to think I knew about Bitcoin before the rest of people. I don't know how true that is. Uh, but I think the first time I ever heard about it was in uh, 2010. Someone, I remember hearing the news that someone ordered Papa John's pizza uh, using Bitcoin. Um, so it sounds like uh, they paid 10,000 Bitcoin for the delivery of two uh, large Papa John's pizzas. Uh, which, looking back, sounds ridiculous. That was like the first time, at least I ever heard of, like Bitcoin actually being exchanged. Which I think, ideally, that's what you know the coin was made for. Was like seamless exchanges between two parties. Uh, so this party uh, ordered Papa John's pizza with it, um, and at the time, uh, this, I think this article mentions that that was like twenty-five dollars with a Bitcoin, um, which if we take today's uh, you know, market value of Bitcoin that's uh, considerably more, <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so I think I think that's when I first heard about it. It was around 2010. Um, I didn't. I was kind of worried about it. I never really got into it then. Uh, I think I heard about it again in like 2014, 2013. Was uh, when the whole Silk Road website happened. It was like this website. People were exchanging, you know, stuff using Bitcoin. Um, but the site also contains stuff like illicit drugs and uh, prostitution and like hitman services and whether or not like all that was really on it, I don't know. I never went there. Um, but I think I heard that again uh, where they just, you know, the federal government got this massive amount of bitcoins uh, that was being moved on this website um, and hearing about the Silk Road. Uh, once again, like I heard about it, I was like, wow, like that's crazy. I can see how uh, money that can't be tracked is being used for illegal uh, products. Uh, and that kind of blew my mind. Um, so I, I kind of heard about it again. Um, I think probably uh, in 2014 um, was another big moment when this bat NTGOX, um, I think it was originally like a Magic the Gathering thing, um, got hacked. Uh, and lost just a ton of Bitcoin, um, which, you know, at the time, 2014, uh, Bitcoin was probably around $8,000 or something. Um, I shouldn't even say that. I don't even know. Uh, but still, like, Bitcoin was, you know, it, we're starting to worth a decent amount of money. Um, and just all this time, I just never really thought of it as, like, an investment thing. Um, and then to use it as a currency was just too crazy, uh, too fluctuation. Um, and then we look at now, uh, where it's you know breaking thirty-two thousand um, dollars, which is just exploded, uh, and it's like spun up this like entire ecosystem around it. Um, this article I'm reading right now is from CoinDesk, which is um, you know it's this website built entirely around this idea of cryptocurrency. This MTGOX was originally used for Magic the Gathering. But because uh, you could trade Bitcoin on it, it became this like Bitcoin exchange. Uh, you can get Bitcoin on your phone and stuff. So it's just crazy to see how much this thing exploded since I first started hearing about it in 2010. Uh, so now I kind of want to go into like 
a few, I want to come up with a couple of bullish cases or why reasons I think Bitcoin is going to continue getting adopted uh, and maybe grow. Um, I don't, like I mentioned earlier, I don't have a background in finance or economics. Um, so this is just my point of view as someone in uh, inside tech. Um, I think one of the big things was um, just the shift in mindset from the industrials. We have here uh, Jamie Dimon, who is a, um, uh, I think, what is it, Goldman Sachs, um, JP Morgan, uh, major, yeah, JP Morgan CEO. Um, so Jamie Dimon's like one of the old school, I think he was the only um, CEO left around of the big financials from like the 2007 crash. So we have here like a old school kind of father, um, kind of like stoic figurehead of the you know banking industry. Uh, and he came out in 2017 mentioning that Bitcoin was a fraud and he's not interested in it. Uh, and then he switched, um, you know, a few years later, he's now saying that it's, it's not his cup of tea, um, but he can understand it. Um, and you kind of have this like shift in mindset from the big financial industries of like, whoa, maybe there is something behind blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, and even if they don't like Bitcoin, they're kind of getting into the blockchain, the uh, you know, like guaranteed ledger of transactions and anonymity, um, which is fantastic. I think just that mind shift uh, kind of switching to it is something that's going to be great for a blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, it kind of reminds me of like, I think as the new generations kind of grow up, generations that's long played these like massive multiplayer online games where the value you have in gold and say RuneScape or World of Warcraft does kind of have this real life transaction cost to it. So it's a lot easier for, I think, the younger generations to kind of visualize that, hey, even though this is digital, uh, just pixels, like this does have a transaction and a meaningful um, correlation to my money in real life. Um, and kind of following that up, uh, PayPal uh, is starting to allow um, customers to sell and buy Bitcoin and other virtual currencies on PayPal accounts, which is massive. Um, PayPal is just, I mean, it's been around for you know years. PayPal is how you send money before Venmo. I think Venmo is just an offshoot of PayPal. Uh, so just the fact that like you can now, we're moving away from this uh, like money order Western, you know, Western Union, I'm gonna send you a cashier's check because these bigger companies are now picking it up. Uh, and it's just massive, the amount of people that actively trade uh, this Bitcoin. Um, South Korea, a third of the workers are crypto investors. These are folks who, you know, take the money out and whether they're investing into equities or other things in capital markets, they're investing in these cryptocurrencies and Bitcoins. Uh, and that kind of follows with the, lately the CEO of MicroStrategy put $6,500 million, uh, 650 million into Bitcoins. And the idea being that like, hey, the market is constantly being devalued, this money the dollar and other you know, fiat currencies are constantly being devalued by the governments that are trying to print themselves out of a deflationary or a depression area. And they're constantly printing this more money. So the money's being worth less. So I need to transfer it into something that is either growing or it's more, I hate to call it stationary because Bitcoin prices are ridiculous, you know, the fluctuation in there but just something that that money is going to be worth something in a few years down the road. Um, so this is a, you know, this is a company listed on the stock exchange, uh, board of directors, people buying into the stock saying they're putting cash, 600, uh, 650 million in cash into Bitcoin to hold it. And this is just the first one that we know of, uh, the first one that came out and talked about it. And I think as this company comes out and talks about it, other companies are gonna one, see the value, and then they're not gonna worry about uh, being the first mover. They're not gonna have to worry about their board of directors like looking at them as crazy as maybe they would have seen if this didn't happen. Uh, and he's, even recently, Elon Musk, I don't know whether he's just trolling or joking, Elon Musk is kind of, uh, you know, both, uh, but reaching out to this company and asking about putting money over Twitter, asking about putting money 
Tesla money into Bitcoin as a storage of funds, uh, which is just absolutely ridiculous that in these past, you know, in 2017, we have people calling Bitcoin just this um, a fraud. Uh, now, just three, sorry, just four years later, because it's 2021 now, uh, just this massive kind of switch in thinking from both retail and, um, you know, the bigger industrial investors. Uh, so that's why I thought it would become bullish and why Bitcoin may continue to grow. But it, I don't think it would be fair without going over maybe why Bitcoin won't grow and why Bitcoin may just disappear. Um, well, not, it can't technically disappear because it's on ledgers, but it may not be worth as much as it is now. Um, and so I want to show one, here's a map. So this map kind of goes over the different um, countries, how they are to Bitcoin. Um, and the reason I want to show this is because I don't believe the decrease in value of Bitcoin is going to be due to a, um, you know, people just not adopting it. I think it's already being adopted as a thing against, um, you know, uh, crazy inflation and deflation, just a place to keep your money. Um, which because it's being used as a storage of money, it kind of goes against the reason I think it was made, which is to become a transactional currency. So just the fact that it's not being used as a transactional currency, it's too volatile, you know, the price change fluctuates too much to be used as any kind of trade for like milk or eggs at the state, uh, you know, at the store or something, but also because the costs are too much. Um, the process, the, the requests and stuff is just too much. It doesn't make any sense when I can go to the store and just pay a dollar. And so I think as Bitcoin continues to grow, um, the cost may just go down because of people don't really find use in it as opposed to just the storage of value. But I think there's other reasons too. And I think the main reason outside of people just stop using it, which I think it's unlikely, but I mean, I can't see the future. I think it's mostly political reasons. And the reason I kind of say that is because right now, there's major governments that want to support their currency in making it used over because a company or a country kind of gains from being able to create transactions of their own currency and be able to have power over that currency. So we see reasons into like 20, you know, 2007 or, uh, 2020, when like the federal government can just um, you know quantitative easing and just produce more of this money, which is fine because that's how transactions are made. They're made in this currency, and that's kind of been the things for the United States since uh, you know 1940, 1944, 1948, the uh, the Bretton Woods Agreement, where countries decided that due to World War II and just the mass amount of costs coming back that currency isn't going to be backed by gold and it says going to be backed by dollars. So kind of, this kind of set the US dollars, maybe the, uh, like the global transaction uh, medium for these different purchases, which kind of led to stuff like the, the petrodollar, where you, know, you have to buy oil internationally using the US dollar. And with oil, you also buy, you know, shipping costs is done in the US dollar. Um, so it's just kind of, the US dollar's kind of established itself as the medium of currency for these different transactions. So I think the main risk to the Bitcoin is probably going to be the US government or other governments. Uh, you know, the US government, one, it's able to track US dollars better. And I say track kind of loosely, but you know, you have, you have laws set in place for holding on to US dollars. You're not uh, flying internationally over a certain dollar amount. Uh, you know, you'd be questioned. <clears throat> um, there's reasons that stuff like money laundering exists because the US dollar, it's um, people ask questions when you carry too much of it around. Holding on to it in like a physical form, you have to stash it. It's, uh, you know, there's legal repercussions. And with Bitcoin, that kind of goes away. And I think a big movement for the governments is going to be able to uh, move away from the cryptocurrency so they can track you, so they can track the currency better in you know criminal proceedings. 
um, illegal activities, I guess it's kind of the same thing, but just having more power over it. So I think that being able to declare that this is used for criminal activities kind of gives them a legal reason to go after this and kind of regulate Bitcoin more, and at which point, at which point, like, would you rather deal with repercussions or legal repercussions and making sure you uh, correct uh, in the legal sense or just hold on to the dollar, you know, uh, continue doing as you do right now. Uh, and then you also have these big movements by the governments, um, like in China, creating their own digital currency. So China's creating their own digital currency and they gave it out, they're testing out in cities where, you know, they give folks X amount of, um, units of this cryptocurrency and if they don't use it in so long it expires. And that kind of gives them the power that, one, you're not going outside the boundaries to Bitcoin. You're able just to use this cryptocurrency over here. And I think kind of the Asian market is a lot easier to get them going to this digital currency just because they've been doing this for so long. You know, uh, transacting in um, fiat currencies over there has been, I mean, I guess it's still fiat, but they use a lot more digital currency and apps and stuff like that to do transactions, whereas in the Western world, a kind of dollar um, and credit cards kind of the more thing on that. So I think long term, uh, there's definitely some downsides to holding on to Bitcoin and kind of putting all your money into it. And I think most of that's going to be political. It's just that the status quo we have now, in order to stay status quo, like it has to start implementing regulations on Bitcoin. So if you're still with me, thank you. I didn't mean for this video to get so long. I just started, you know, rambling in about a topic that I find really interesting. So if you find this interesting, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you think it's going to go up, if you think it's going to go down, if I was wrong about something, definitely let me know because I'm interested in keeping this conversation going. Um, so happy new year. If you've been a holder of Bitcoin, it's paid off for you. And, um, if you're not a holder, you know, is it too late soon to get in? Is it too late? I don't know. Uh, that's something you all have to make up your mind on. Uh, once again, I said, I do own a partial amount of Bitcoin. I held that for years though, just because I've been too scared to sell. Um, so I have not been in the current market outside of just a simple holder. Um, with all that said, Happy New Year's, have a great rest of your day, and thanks for tuning in.